Good morning. 
Good morning to all of you from wherever you are worshiping today, whether right here in our beautiful historic sanctuary or at home around the kitchen table or in your office around the world, welcome. We are so delighted to have all of you here at Coral Gables Congregational Church. As I always say, we are part of the United Church of Christ and we offer you this invitation each and every time we gather that no matter who you are or where you are on your life journey, you are welcome here. As you might have already gathered as you came in this morning, after worship is our annual German Christmas market. There is food, there are crafts, there's German mauled wine, my personal favorite, the pretzels, and lots and lots of fun. Following worships, I encourage you to join in the festivities and to enjoy a traditional Christmas market without the snow. You can't beat it. So, And visitors, we would so be delighted to have you with us as well. Also, any of you who are interested in learning about becoming a member here at Gables UCC or would like to know more about what it is we believe and stand for or witness to, we invite you to join us at 1230 in our chapel for an inquirer's gathering, an opportunity to inquire about all of those things and about becoming a member of this beloved community. So following worship, I invite you to run and grab maybe a lunch at the German market and then come join us in the chapel. and We will have some things to drink there as well as some strudel and some other treats for you. On your way out today, I hope that all of you will find your way to the fellowship hall at some point and find our angel tree and take an angel or two that has a name and an age for a gift to be bought for someone at, who is at the, home, at the homeless shelter at Lotus House. We hope that you will participate in that. It's a wonderful family activity, but also, you know, Christmas is about sharing and caring, and we encourage you to do that. For those of you who are virtuers at home, we encourage you to be in touch with Pastor Megan, and she'll choose an angel for you, and you can work out about purchasing a gift as well. Also, this week begins our Advent programs, including our midday Advent devotions on Zoom each Tuesday, each Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., our Advent dinner church. Information for both is on page 9 of your bulletin. And you will also note that there are so many other announcements about upcoming programs, events, and worship opportunities throughout this Advent season. Just a word or two about today's service. If you have a prayer concern or joy that you would like for me to include in our morning prayers, as well as our call to care prayer list, please text or email me those concerns or joys. My number for texting or email is at the bottom of page five in your bulletin. Also, at the end of the service, um, instead of a postlude by um, Dr. Taylor, we are going to have the choir sing a beautiful German chorale. And as they sing that, um, they will walk us out the front doors and we are going to kick off the German market in that way. So if you wish, as the choir leaves, if you'll follow them and then we will officially kick off the German Christmas market for this year. Now, we have a very important announcement, and I invite my friend Anne, my friend Anne, to come forward here. <laughs> well, Anne. As Good the, morning. As the chair of our 100th anniversary committee and our blowout, are you getting excited as we get closer to the grand finale of our 100th anniversary celebrations? I surely am, Lori. And I can't wait to see all of my committee's work, vision, and planning 
come to fruition. You know, I'm getting all kinds of notes and letters and emails and texts from folks from around the country, some who are former members and now live elsewhere. Some are our virtuers who maybe are with us today who live elsewhere, and others who just love this church saying, they are coming to celebrate with us. It will be like this big, giant family reunion bringing generations of Gable UCC church folks together. We'd love to have all the folks who love this church join us on the weekend of December 16th and 17th. On Saturday, December the 16th, we're going to be eating a glorious meal out on the green under the stars. And then we're going to dance the night away here in this beautiful historic sanctuary. And it's going to be a blowout, a big bash like you have never seen before. Because everybody knows Gable's Church knows how to do what? Blow the lid Blow off the, the box. Blow the lid off the box. And exactly. turn it into a dance floor. Exactly. So uh, uh, tickets are on sale today, either online. You can see the back of your bulletin for the link for that. Or they can see you after worship in the fellowship hall, correct? That is correct. Absolutely. And we want to make sure that everybody here knows that they are welcome. If for any reason at all you're a student or you can't, Make it happen at this time. You just need to email Laurie and me. We have lots of wonderful folks who have purchased extra tickets to ensure that our entire congregation and our guests and our family, our friends and our community can all be here with us. Absolutely. And there's also child care for kids up through fifth grade. There's food for all palates and diets. And I can't wait to see some of our folks, maybe like Connie Acosta, do a little salsa or a wobble or a cha-cha or two. Listen, it's going to be dancing through the ages. So there's a little something for every age and every group here. So don't you worry. But also, uh, I want you to know that you get extra points if you dress how? How? In your favorite 20s, Gadsby outfit, right? You say so. Yes, right. Laurie. Happier. I know, I know. Get so, in the spirit, I'm Chica. I'm in the spirit. I'm channeling all you, right, Anne. All okay. Right, all right. But you know, Anne, I really want to thank you and the committee for all of the hard work you put into making this happen. I know you want the church family to show up and share in such a spectacular event. And I think you might be just a little worried that folks are slow at getting their tickets. It is Miami, after all. But I want to show you something here, Anne. All right, show me. Would all of you who have purchased a ticket or are planning on attending, would you stand? Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right! Woo! You see, Anne? It's going to be the party of the year. The party of the century, Laurie. And we certainly hope the rest of, uh, of you all will join us on that evening. Thank, Thank you, you. Anne. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> As we now begin our service in Maiboa, this year during our 100th anniversary, Coral Gables Congregational Church acknowledges the ancestral and traditional territories of the Seminole Tribe of Florida, the Council of the Original Miccosukee Seminole Na Nation Aboriginal Peoples, and the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida, who are the original owners and custodians of the land on which we stand, serve, and worship. The significance of this sacred ground, as well as its painful history, compels us as a congregation to engage in reparative justice in words, deeds, and dollars. And in this 100th anniversary year, we will seek to do so. Dear friends, let's be together in Advent worship.
Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tunes without the words and never stops at all. Hope is like peace. It is a gift that only we can give one another. Friends, as we enter this Advent season, we come to this space familiar with the darkness and hungry for hope. So today, we light the candle of hope as a prayer, a protest, and a reminder that darkness will not win. Darkness will not win. Cancer will not win. Death will not win. Bigotry will not win. Racism will not win. Terrorism will not win. War will not win. Love will win. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and in the darkness did not overcome it.
greet our neighbors this day with the hope that Christ brings, a hope that changes our hearts and transforms our world by saying, the hope of Christ be with you and also with you. Our scripture reading for this first Sunday of Advent comes from the Gospel of Mark. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will lose its brightness, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the promised one coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then the angels will be sent to gather the chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see those things happening, know that the promised one is near right at the door. The truth is, before this generation is passed away, all those things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for that day or hour, nobody knows it. Neither the angels of heaven, nor the only begotten, no one but Abba God. Be constantly on the watch. Stay awake. You do not know when the appointed time will come. It is like people traveling abroad. They leave their home and put the workers in charge, each with a certain task. And those who watch at the front gate are ordered to stay on the alert. So stay alert. You do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether at dusk, at midnight, when the rooster crows, or already dawn. Do not let the owner come suddenly and catch you asleep. When I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. Friends, listen, God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There's an old fable that goes like this. 
Two frogs hop as they do along through their day, hop as they do into a bucket. This bucket happened to be half filled with cream, which made the sides very slippery, too slippery for the frogs to climb out, too deep to jump out. Well, one frog began to moan and to wail, we'll never get out of here, we're doomed. But the other frog quietly thought about their predicament. While he thought, he moved his legs, treading water in the cream, if you will. We'll never get out, we're doomed, moaned one. And the other paddled, and to drown out his companion, started chanting, keep hope alive, keep hope alive. And he urged his despairing friend to do the same. Keep hope alive, keep hope alive. And around and around they swam, croaking, keep hope alive, keep hope alive. Well, after some time, the most astonishing thing happened. Butter formed from the cream. As those frogs swam around and around, they churned the cream into butter, enough to climb up on and hop out of the pail and go on their merry way still chanting to themselves, keep hope alive, keep hope alive. Well, not to stretch this image too far, but I suspect that most of us in this place who are constantly bombarded by headlines and news, still reeling from illness or unsettling diagnoses or death, disappointments or hurt, dealing with the various twists and turns of life, feel as if our bucket of cream runneth over. And yet today, on this first Sunday of Advent, we are invited. No, let's make that dared. We are dared to lift up hope as a precious gift of this Advent season. I rarely think of hope, real hope. You know, the kind of hope that carries you through the storms of life that comforts when all else fails, the kind of hope that adds some clarity and contentment to our lives. Without recalling a sermon that once inspired President Obama when his pastor, the Reverend Jeremiah Wright of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, preached a sermon titled, The Audacity of Hope. It was based on a painting by G.F. Watts called Hope, which shows a lone blindfolded female figure sitting on a globe. Her clothes are in rags. Her body is scarred and bruised. Her harp is all but destroyed with only one string left. And yet this painting suggests that she still had the audacity to make music hope in the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty. The audacity of hope, said Reverend Wright, to take the one string you have left and to play it. What audacity, what hope, but it's also what will save you in the end, which is why each year in our liturgical journey, the church invites us to circle back around into this season of Advent, a time of preparation for the birthing of hope. But it's not the hope of rose-colored glasses or sweet Hallmark card sentiments. Hope is not an easy thing to hold on to. It's not an easy worldview. In fact, it demands something of us it requires a change in our thinking, our acting, our doing, and our very being. One writer has said, hope is the belief that we are always in process, always opening and unfolding, and that every relationship, every experience, every moment is an opportunity for growth and transformation. I like what author Anne Lamott says, that when things get really terrible, painful, and awful, it's often because something amazing is getting ready to be born. In our morning text, 
the gospel writer Mark speaks of hope in another way. Keep awake, he says. Perhaps another way to translate this is be awake. Or even I might paraphrase it as this, be hopeful. Jesus isn't telling us to wake from sleep, but rather to stay alert, to find the hope in and around us. When Christ comes, and as we learned last week in the parable of the sheep and goats, that Jesus comes when we least expect him, in ways we least expect him, and through people we least expect to bear his image. But when Christ comes, we are to be ready for him. Have any of you ever watched a Texas A&M football game? Well, have you ever noticed that the entire student body stands for the entire game? Well, the spirit of the 12th man on the team goes back to 1922, when the Aggies had suffered so many injuries that there was no one left on the bench. One version of this legend says that a student jumped down from the bleachers to take the field when the next injury happened, running in the final touchdown to win the game. But the facts actually aren't quite that dramatic. Rather, a student by the name of E. King Gill, many years ago had left the football team in order to play basketball. He happened to be at the football game that day and he put on an injured player's uniform, standing on the sidelines for the entire game, just in case another player might get injured. But he never had to go in. And the Aggies rallied and won the game. And from that time on, the student body stands throughout each game to demonstrate their readiness to hit the field if necessary. Well, this is the kind of staying awake be hopeful that Jesus asks of us. It's the kind of alert attention that anticipates victory and remains willing to participate at any moment. Over the next four weeks, we will celebrate Advent, both as we always traditionally have and in some ways that we never have before. For in the midst of this Advent season, we will pause on the third Sunday and celebrate the 100th anniversary of this church. Was there ever more hope than when those 61 folks, believers, dreamers, hope-filled people, all of them, gathered on that December Sunday in 1923 to birth a church? Could they have ever imagined what their hope would bring forth especially if they could see us now. Each generation lived in hope through wars and rumors of wars, depression, hurricanes, financial challenges, loss of beloved pastors and church members, all arguments, disappointments, and the everyday challenges that are often at the door. I have a small sign in my office that someone gave me a couple years back that says, she believed she could, so she did. For those folks 100 years ago believed they could, and so they did. And that, my dear friends, is called hope. And so I close with this little story found on a friend's Facebook post. Apparently, a mom was driving along with her eight-year-old when he asked, do you want me to throw the confetti in my pocket? Her first thought was absolutely not. All those little pieces of paper in my car. But then she paused, thought about it, and wondered out loud, why do you have confetti in your pocket? Her eight-year-old answered, it's my emergency confetti. I carry it everywhere in case there's good news. As we move from darkness to light during this season of Advent, this time of coming toward, may your hope be anchored in the good news that Jesus comes just as he promised. And when he comes, he hopes for something too. He hopes you'll be alert, that you will be ready, and that you will be filled with such hope 
that your supply of emergency confetti will be ready to announce his coming. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>
fellow travelers, what do we seek in this season of Advent? We seek bread for the journey, rest along the way, and most of all, we seek hope for ourselves and for the world. And where do we find hope? Hope is found at Christ's table, in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup, in serving one another and partaking in the feast. Hope is found in the body of Christ, incarnate here among us, broken and blessed for us, the hands that serve, the feet that bring good news, the body of Christ that opens the door and welcomes the weary, the hungry, and the hopeless this Advent season. Fellow travelers, let us pray. O oh, Holy One, thank you. Thank you for this season of Advent that leads us to a joyous Christmas celebration. We are filled with hope and expectation for the new ways that we will experience your presence throughout these next several weeks. During this time of year, as we think about how you came to the world to be one with us, we lift our prayers for those who are suffering and those in need. Help us to not exclude anyone from your unconditional and inclusive love. And so we pray that you will heal those who are ill, that you will comfort those who grieve, that you will befriend those who are lonely, that you will calm those who are troubled, that you will mend the hearts that are broken, that you will be present in hope to so many who live this day in utter hopelessness. We pray for all whose lives are impacted by war or violence, whether in the Middle East or Ukraine or Haiti or so many other places of inhumanity, violence, and pain. We remember those uprooted from their homes and their lives, those who have witnessed death and destruction on their streets and in their homes, among their families and their neighbors. O oh God of all creation, when we lose track of our sacred calling to live in peace and to resolve conflict in kindly ways, call us back to your vision of peace on earth and goodwill among all people. When we lose track of the deep interconnectedness of all life, fill us with your love and strengthen us to be ambassadors of your mercy. This day we pray for Tom as he heals from recent hip surgery and for Paul as he continues to recuperate from surgery. We pray for Nick that he might find peace and know how he is so dearly loved. For Alyssa, an eight-year-old and one of our church kids who is having some health problems, we pray for her healing and that she will recover soon. We pray for all who have had or who now have COVID, RSV, the flu, that their healing may be complete, full, or without lingering challenges. We think of all who struggle with depression, loneliness, and anxiety. Grant them peace of mind and hope in their hearts, we pray. We offer up prayers of love and hope for Will in Atlanta as he adjusts to his new assisted living facility. We pray for Robbie, who has cancer, and for his wife and all his caregivers. May they find strength while they face his illness and know that they are loved. We pray, as we already have and do in so many ways, for peace in Israel and Palestine. We offer up prayers for Valerie to heal from the flu. We also offer up a prayer of healing for Sheila and for Alejandro, as he begins a new chapter while moving from Miami. We lift before you Don, who recently has been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. May he believe in hope and stay hopeful. We lift before you a dear friend who is again at the hospital with recurring health complications. Help heal his body and soul 
and bring him hope and peace, we pray. We also lift before you a friend asking that hope might fill her life as she was just diagnosed with breast cancer. And we pray as well for Cecilia, who is trying to have a child, and ask that you be with her on that journey. Oh God, as we begin now to make our transition from this sanctuary to the sanctuary of the wider world, help us at all times and in all places to be an experience of hope for others. Infuse our lives with patience and vision so that we may walk with dignity in the details of our lives, that we might truly be sermons in shoes, reflecting your love for all humankind. And we also pray that you will walk with us as we approach this communion table today. Help us to approach your table with hope and faithfulness with a sense of forgiveness and of grace. Bless and prosper this meal. Bless and prosper this community. Bless and prosper our lives that justice and love may be the measure of our common witness. All of this and so much more, we pray in the name of Christ who came, that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. It is through this broken bread that we participate in the life of Christ. And it is through this cup of new covenant poured out for each of us that we participate in the love of Christ. Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. We invite you to come forward this morning down through the center aisle to receive bread from me and then go to one of the ushers on either side to receive the cup and you can place your cup in an empty tray there. But do come, come in all hope, know that Christ is tru truly present.
a family of faith, it doesn't take long to see that for many of us, we are still seeking some hope in our lives and in the world around us. There are people who are hungry, oceans that are polluted, churches that are fading, walls that are growing. We are clearly not there yet. So until we reach that promised day, giving what we can to make a better world matters. When we give of our tithes, our pledges, our morning offerings, we help build God's home here. So it is with hopeful hearts this morning, we invite you to give of your precious resources. There are many ways to give financially. There are offering plates at our doors, online, by texting, all found in your bulletin this morning. We also invite you to be generous with your time and your talent. As you look through your bulletin, you will see countless ways to serve and to work toward justice and peace, of helping others in need and seeking to make this world a place fit for all of God's children. Finally, I invite you, if you're not yet a member of this church, to join our beloved community. We would be so honored to have you with us this morning following our worship at 1230 in our chapel, where we will hold an inquirer's gathering and give you the opportunity to inquire about what it means to be a church member and who we are, what we stand for and believe. We hope that you will indeed join us. So dear family, let us grow together and meet the great challenges to which we are called. God is already blessing this work in all of our lives. Please stand to receive our benediction. There is a world out there that is oversupplied with theories and technology, theology and test, but drastically undersupplied with hope. You, however, like Christ, are tomorrow's people. Those who know the future is pregnant with promise and hope. We go to live out hope graciously and courageously. Amen.